All right, everyone. Got an awesome guest for you here today, AJ Kaz, because, uh, you know, I can't pronounce your last name. But uh, <laughs> so we got AJ, the coffee Viking over here. And as per usual, he's drinking coffee. And uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, AJ. And uh, what, what do you do? What, why are we even yeah. talking? <laughs> yeah, so I've got my hands in a couple of things, but the uh, backstory, uh, fortunately, I've, I've been on a couple of podcasts before yours, so I've kind of got this thing dialed. Um, but the backstory is, uh, grew up playing baseball 16 years, dad was always preaching, you know, you're never going to be biggest, fastest, strongest, smartest, whatever, so you're going to have to outwork everybody. Um Fast forward, I was a suburban kid up until my freshman year of high school. Uh, the school district that I was at had a levy situation fallout where they actually lost sports for a time. I was playing three sports at that time. I wasn't going to go to a high school that didn't have sports, so I went down to my mom's alma mater. At that time, I became closer and closer with my cousin and his buddies, um, and I basically just became enamored hanging out, you, you know, I'm, I am an older brother. I don't have an older brother. And so I just wanted to be around those guys. You know, I joke uh, a lot of those times I was beer bitch. Hey, AJ, go grab us a beer, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. um, but they're out shooting bows and talking camo and strategies and stuff like that. And finally I was like, you know, I, I want to go hunting with you. And my cousin said, you know, go get your license do the test, do the, you know, the, the studying and things like that. And he's like, if you pass, I'll take you. Well, I was able to pass super fortunate, found a Matthews switchback XT, which if you talk to the Matthews heads, that's still to this day, one of the best bows that they ever made. I found it for 400 bucks at a yard sale. A couple of tweaks here and there, it's ready to go. Um, first year out, I was fortunate enough to take a small basket rack, uh, six and was hooked from there. Um, kind of not a hiatus, but I kind of took hunting kind of took a backseat because I was fortunate to play baseball in college. Once I was done with baseball, I essentially filled that void with fitness and diving into hunting that much more. Fast forward again, 20, uh, 2020, uh, my cousin, my best friend Swope and a couple other buddies, my brother uh, and a uh, guy by the name of Josh, we go to Total Archery Challenge. It's our first experience. We're like, oh man, this is cool. Uh, it was, a uh, little did I know, cause it was 2020, it was a quarter of the size that it normally was. Uh, well, my buddy Swope and I, we were over the moon about it. We were like, this is the coolest thing ever. We're gonna use this as our vacation each year, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward again, 20, uh, last year, 2021, uh, my buddy Swope and I, we call or we ask around and no one wants to go with us. We're like, screw it. We're going to go anyways. Have a good time. And, you know, people will find I am 100% type A personality. Swope is my exact opposite. And, you know, I hype him up. He keeps me level headed. You know, he reminds me that, you know, uh, taking it slow on the dirt roads is a good thing and just <laughs> keeps me keeps me down to earth you know what I mean love the dude to death he's gonna be my wedding actually um so we go 2021 PA total archery challenge Hold I on. shoot yeah don't tell the story yet oh you get you're beating me to it <laughs> oh all right well so then so that's you know if, for I'm, those that I'm, are listening y'all are gonna hear an awesome story because i wanted to get a little bit more detail than just the run than just the brief overview because i got a little bit of a behind the scenes from jake okay. about a little bit more as to how this came about so we're gonna we're gonna skip over tac 2021 okay so we'll go you know um, fast forward to now, I uh, co-own a coffee company that I started with my buddy in college. This is now year five for us. We're actually moving to a new facility that will allow us to grow for the next 10 to 15 years. The day job that pays the bills is uh, in craft beer. I actually sell craft beer for a company whose whole motto is beer plus outside equals Noctera. And I'm like, this is perfect. Whether you're you mowing go. the lawn or climbing Mount Everest and you like craft beer, like you're our type of people. Um, and then I actually now do some work in the 
uh, outdoor industry, the outdoor space, specifically archery and bow hunting and things like that. Um, got a lot of trips planned for this year, but that's the down and dirty quick bit of who I am. That's awesome. That's so cool. And, you know, I love having people on the podcast, you know, that are just normal Joes and, and I'm kind of coming up and, and mulling this over. And this is the first time everyone's going to hear this. This will come out in a couple of weeks, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mulling over the idea of some kind of slogan, like average Joe doesn't equal status quo. Right. And, and so you being the average Joe, right. Your dad drilled that into your head. You're not going to be the strongest, fastest, smartest, but you're, you work hard. Right. And that's, that's how I feel as well. If, if I can be accused of anything other than being an awesome ginger, it's being consistent. Right. And, and consistency is just key. And that's the one thing I'm like, I'm good at that. I can be consistent. Right. And it seems like you've kind of had that in your life as well, where, where you understood that you weren't the most talented, but you would outwork those people that did have that talent that went and, you know, just enjoyed their weekends and came back, maybe hung over on Monday or whatever you were out there grinding and making sure that things were happening. So, um, I love people like that, man. And, and that's kind of what, what's gravitated me towards who you are. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're engaged, you got a fiance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Very you've blessed. got a job. You've got a bunch of side things going on as well. You've started your own business. Mm -hmm. Um, you're kind of busy just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so even though you don't have kids, right. And that's not something that I would necessarily wish on anyone. That's not quite ready for it. You've got other children that you were growing right and yeah and, you know in a not physical children sense but you've got other things that you're you're growing with and so what's um how do you keep that i hate the word balance because it's not there really is never balance but how do you keep all those things going and keep juggling it to the point where everything is succeeding and and progressing all at the same time what are some some ways that you do that uh so I, I, you know, as, as funny as it sounds, everybody always talks about you are who you surround yourself with. And in today's day and age with social media, you know, uh, at our fingertips, you know, I can look up a random celebrity's birthday in two seconds, you know? And so I do my best to, um, follow the people that make companies happen. Right. So first form, right. I follow Andy Frisella, um, Origin. I follow Pete and Kip and Cam Haynes and, you know, um, MKC. I follow Josh Smith, you know, and I follow Ed Milet and, and Goggins and, and all of those guys. And I see what those guys are doing. And I use that to my advantage to, you know, anytime I'm feeling lazy, I pop open my social or my Instagram or something like that. And I'll see cams running a marathon or I'll see Andy's hitting part two of his workouts or, you know, whatever it is. And I'm like, why am I sitting on the couch when I can be up doing something, not just for the sake of doing something, but doing something to grow in some area of my life. And you know, that's one of the, that's one of the biggest things that I do is I follow people doing what I hope to be doing. And that's a really good, not necessarily motivator, but it's a really good way to stay consistent um, for me. And then, you know, like you said, there's no real balance, but it's more so blocking out times of when I'm working on different things and putting a hundred percent into that for, you know, quick example, uh, this morning, you know, I did my outdoor workout. I did my 10 pages of reading. I did my five minute cold shower and I have that piece blocked out. Right. Then I roll into Jennings Java and which is the, my coffee company. And it was a bang out wholesale day. We got behind on some stuff. Daniel was having some apartment issues and just got behind on the week. So it was, we need to do X, Y, Z. I'm here for three hours. Let's get as much done as possible. Then I do those deliveries, roll into the next block of time. And it's all Noctera based. And it's send emails, respond to texts, 
uh, get orders from so and so, visit a client here and there, right? Then today, you know, still in today, I, my next blocked off section was I need to get home and handle the honey do list like we were talking about. So mowed the yard front and back, um, got uh, some of my camo clothes out of the washer. They're hanging on the clothesline, letting them air dry so they're sent free. I'm downstairs. We just had some carbon strips put up uh, on our block walls downstairs. Well, they're black, our walls are white. So I'm painting those guys right now and I've got to add another coat after we get off of this. And so doing, and actually Ed Milet talks about it um, in his book, I'm reading it right now. Say one more. What one more? Yeah, I wanted to say one try, but it's not one try. It's one more. I'm actually reading it right now, and he basically blocks his day, and it gives him essentially three times as much time to focus on what he needs to focus on. Um, so those are two of the biggest things: who I follow, who I associate myself with, and blocking out. I'm getting better at it. Still got work to do, but also blocking out my time as well. Yep. I hear that. That's something I'm, I'm currently working on as well as time blocking. I'm not really good at it because things are a little hectic over the summer with kids and you mm -hmm. can't really, and that that's one thing that I struggle with a little bit is, you know, having kids is a little bit harder to time block because during the summer now, during the school year, I feel a little bit better. I can be a little yeah. bit more productive, but like during the summer, man, I'm like, I'm dead in the middle of my hour or two hours to respond to email and there's an accident. I'm like, I can't just leave them there. Right. You know, like I gotta yep. go take care of something. So that that's something that I, I definitely appreciate though. The, the time blocking is definitely, I notice when I am able to have it um, as a part of my day, it definitely makes a huge difference. Um, and whether that's here working or on the mountain, you know, you're like, I'm going to time block this time. I'm sitting at this spot or this time I'm hiking this yeah. time I'm eating, you know, and that makes you more efficient, you know, a, a more efficient predator up there on the mountain as well, or even in the whitetail woods or wherever it is that you're at. Um, I haven't quite done a lot of Midwest stuff. Uh, apparently I need to get up to Ohio. Yeah. There's some thumpers up there that, that there's some, there's need to some get studs thumped. running around right now. <laughs> yeah. That's what, yeah. I was just talking with Joe about that as well. And he was saying the same thing. So um, either way, time blocking is definitely a big deal. Uh, especially for people that maybe feel like they're kind of going all over the place and have yeah. so many things going on. So I, I love that you shared that um, because you do have so many things going on. Now, let me ask you another question because you, you, you haven't brought this up necessarily, you kind of have with sports, but fitness related. Um, what, why have you continued fitness after sports? Because I got tired of being the skinny guy with abs. <laughs> Um, you, you know, the, the, the backstory with that is growing up, I've always been lean. I've always been the skinny kid. You know, I can still remember in high school, you know, being thinner, but we would do like core workouts and core competitions. And everyone was always, Oh, it's just cause you don't, you know, I would win these core competitions because I actually had a strong core but a lot of the guys were like, oh, it's because you got 2% body fat, you know, yeah. on, you're not moving as much weight on and on and on. Well, then I went to college and believe it or not, I was actually a catcher in college. And most of the time people think of the catcher as the big overweight guy, yeah. slow moving, things like that. Or the home run um, hitter, the, the strong, strong, yeah. you know, stocky guy. I yeah, pictured yeah. you more. I was going to ask you that too. I pictured you more of a shortstop. A lot of uh, I get a lot of left field shortstop and second base, hmm. um, which I've played those positions. Once again, dad never wanted me to specialize. So I I could speak in each position, basically. Um, but catching was home to me. And well, you're kind of in control of the field. So that makes sense with the type A personality. Yeah. Yeah. And I never had problem being loud either. Uh, that was also <laughs> part of, because of him. Um, but yeah, so I was 152 pound collegiate catcher, um, you know, junior year, senior year, I was able yeah, to I think bump last up. time I was 150 pounds. I was fourth like grade, ninth grade, yeah. <laughs> like, sir, no joke. And maybe ninth grade where I did the thing where I was like 150 pounds from like sixth grade to ninth grade, but I did this and just, you know, stretched out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, 
so yeah and then you know junior senior year i put on like i was like 160 maybe 165 when i left um baseball was my life for 16 years and i needed to fill that void with something and fitness was just there from already doing um fitness programs and weight training for baseball i was able to just slip that in and we have a cool local gym here in ohio um that i go to it's great the people are awesome and i've you know just kind of the whole goal was get bigger i always wanted to see myself at like 190 195 uh currently i'm at like 180 182 but i just i feel like at 190 195 i would really like the way i look now you and i both know if and when i get to 190 195 I'm going to want to be something else because it's, it's a never ending cat and mouse game. Oh yeah. Yeah. When I was, I got down to 193 last year and I just couldn't get, I was wanting to get down to 185. Um, and, and I realized I'm like, I, I don't know. 190 is feeling really good. Then I was like, I'm going to bulk. I'm going to see how this goes. And I don't like it. I'm cutting back down. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one thing too, is like, especially, you know, doing what we do, chasing the animals that we chase, me getting more into trying to get out West and stuff like that. There's, there, ha there has to be a balance between let's get as big and as strong as possible and let's still be functional and lethal in the woods. That's why, you know, and not to beat a dead horse, but that's why you look at like Dan with elk shape. You look at guys like Cam Haynes, they're strong right? They're, they're real strong, but they are functional. They are mm -hmm. fast. They are quick twitch. They're up, down. Their cardio is absurd, you mm -hmm. know, and that makes them a more lethal predator when they're doing what they love. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm more mobile now than I was when I was at 193 last year, because I started adding a lot of mobility in because mm -hmm. I realized that was a huge weakness. My, my hip flexors would always get tight after, you know, hiking up the mountain and stuff. And I just kind of pushed through it, but um, now I'm like, okay, now I need to cut back down because I'm carrying that extra weight, even though I feel stronger, you know, but I just, I'd, I'd rather be back down on the one nineties. Um, so let's meet in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> um, but that's awesome, man. So sports to fitness, uh, you know, business owner, um, you've got a nine to five as well. Uh, you got lots going on there. Now tell me about. Um, Let's get into this story here with, uh, with, with archery. So are you, um, a first generation bow hunter? Did that come up, you know, through your family? You mentioned you picked a bow up, but I don't know. Is that your first bow that you ever had? Did you shoot before that? Yeah. So the, the first generation aspect is kind of gray mm. for me. Well, so no, it's not gray. Um, my mom and dad do not hunt, excuse me. My mom and dad do not hunt. My grandfather does, my cousin does, my uncle does. So everybody except my immediate family does. My brother got into it with me as well. Um, but yeah, and so, you know, I, I can still remember going on doe patrol with my grandfather during gun season. Um, you know, we've got the stereotypical deer camp. I can remember back when I was getting into it and, following what my cousin's doing and stuff like that. Uh, when it was gun season, they used to do deer drives and they actually let me tag along on one of them. You know, my uncle, I'm very fortunate. My uncle's garage is the butcher shop for the guys in deer camp. So I can remember there being seven deer, two of them are bucks, five of them are does hanging uh, across his rafters and people are just, hanging out, good camaraderie. 90% of the time, it's my uncle and cousin doing the processing because someone will start and they're not doing it right. And they're like, well, my uncle's the type and you'll know what I'm talking about. My uncle's the old school type. He's like, here, let me show you how to do it. And then I'll let you do it. And you blink and he's done with it. And it's <laughs> like, well, I, I thought you were going to let me do it. And mm -hmm. he's like, well, you can get the next one. And so it, you know, just different camaraderie aspects like that, that really tied everything in. Um, but it's funny, right? I see all that stuff. I've enjoyed 
and love deer camp. Still to this day, I go down to deer camp just to hang out and, you know, uh, tell stories with the guys, but I actually don't gun hunt at all um, anymore. I have in the past, but it just, it, doing it with a bow, there's something, something extra primal with it. Now, granted, right. We've got bows. Now we're able to shoot 120, 130 yards, um, things like that. But there's still, when you're hunting a primal element to the fact that I can see the deer's breath before I can take a, 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 um, ethical shot on it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's kind of where my family stems in the deer hunting aspect. Nice. Yeah. So same, same here. I grew up, uh, in North Carolina and I went hunting a couple times and it just didn't. So I, I love animals, grew up wanting to be a veterinarian. Um, and I didn't like the idea of sitting in a stand with a rifle. Um, the woods are super thick, which I imagine they are where you're at as well. And so you really can't see that far anyway, but it just felt easy or yeah. some of the stands that I was sitting in, you know, it was literally shooting lanes. There's corn here. There's a salt lick there. And there's something else down here. And I'm like, if I want to target practice, I can just go to the range. I don't need to use an animal for that. So right. for me, it just didn't seem right. And, and so I never really got into hunting out East, even though I've got a lifetime hunting and fishing license out in North Carolina that my great grandfather had the forethought of buying me when I was born. That's and so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I can go, I can call them up and get my tags whenever I want. I just, now that I'm into bow hunting, I'm like, heck yeah, I'll go sit in a tree stand with a bow. Right. Um, and so that, so I grew up fishing mainly, but as far as, as hunting with a rifle, I, I totally get where you're coming from there. It's just not the same as, as, as bow hunting. And I've only been doing it a couple of years now. Um, and it's just, it's completely taken over, uh, you know, as far as hunting is concerned and even my, my life in general, right. You, you want to stay fit. You want to keep your shoulders mobile. You want to keep everything strong so that you, your core strong, so you can hold the bow back. Um, you know, the constant training of being able to shoot your bow at distances. And uh, speaking of shooting your bow at distances, let's talk a little bit about what happened in, <laughs> in TAC 2021. So give, give us the, the story before TAC, because I heard something about there's some kind of manifesting going on over there with the coffee Viking. Um, oh, that's kind of, yeah. kind of what well, I so I don't know what all Jake told you, but yeah, I want to hear you your know. point of view. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm, I'm a big visualization manifestation, you know, stuff like that, but you have to put the work behind it. Right. You and I, you and I both know this, we both get this, you know, a lot of, a lot of people believe that if you just think about something, eventually it'll just happen but it's, you know, a 50, 50 lane, you've got to get really good at visualization at, um, you know, thinking about how the world works and the universe works and everything connected. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But then you also have to go out and take the necessary steps to make that vision happen. So 2021 rolls around and Swope and I can't get anybody else to go. We're like, screw it. We're going to go anyways. And we're going to have an awesome time. We're going to shoot as many courses as possible. Um, you know, I assume most of your listeners know what total archery challenge is. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't, I mean, just basically shooting at 3D targets in the mountains. Yeah. Yep. And plenty of, uh, oh, plenty of courses, uh, multiple days, huge, huge event. Um, but yeah, so we get out there. We're having a good time. I'm shooting well. Uh, we found out after the fact that some of the time his fletchings were clipping. And so he didn't shoot all that great. This year was a whole different story. Um, but so we get done on day one and he's like, well, last year we never ended up shooting at him because we were tired on the last day. Why don't we just go over and we'll, we'll hang out with the guys and we'll shoot and talk to them and things like that. And so we went over there and they had a African safari shot. It was 43 yards and you just had to touch the line of the perfect 10 or 12 ring, whatever you want to call it. And the novelty truck shot was 111 yards, had to be a dip can size inside out. So it can't be touching the line. 
the uh, Safari Hunt was $5 a shot. The truck shot was $15 a shot. I'm an opportunity cost guy. I can get way more bang for my buck shooting at the African Safari. And I'm like, that would be a trip of a lifetime minus the taxidermy fees, but neither here nor there. <laughs> um, so I'm sitting there, I'm shooting. Swope comes over to me two different times. And he's like, dude, I shot at it. You got to come shoot at it. And I'm like, dude, this is five bucks. That's 15. I'm content over here. Comes back a third time. And he says something to the extent of, well, too bad because I already bought your shot. And I looked at him. I'm like, are you serious? And he goes, yep. And so I end up getting ready to shoot for this uh, truck. And this is just to enter you in, but I get ready to shoot for this truck and there's two guys. And I, to this day, I don't know, I don't know who they are, who they were, but they had blown up their arrows on the iron rhino and they were like signing them. I'm pretty sure they were just like local pro shop guys, just joking around playing, playing up big shot. And they write their name down there like, oh, you know, who wants an autograph broken arrow? And obviously no one steps up. And I'm like, well, I'll take it. Why not? So I throw it in my pack and I'm lining up. And this guy walks past me and goes, aim six inches to your right. He goes, there's a, there's a wind up on the hill and leaves. And he's gone, right? I've still got his arrow up behind me because I'm like, I'm, I, I, I can never get rid of this. He leaves. He's gone. He's, he's a ghost. He's a spirit, whatever. So I line up, I get ready to take my shot. I get it right in the armpit where I want to be. And I, I just slide over six inches to the right and I let her fly. And, you know, it, it ended up hitting, but the guy that was running it, Rob Chalinski, God bless this guy. He basically sets up the Pennsylvania course, which is the second largest by himself while the other crew is in Vermont. And he looks at me he's got, he like pulls away from the binos and he's got deer and headlights. Look, he's like, dude, it's close. And he's like, do you want to come look at it? I'm like, nope, we're going to, we're going to let it be what it is. We're going to find out once we get up to it. Swope goes up to the binos. He gives deer and headlights. Look, he's like, dude, you got to come over here and look at this. I'm like, uh-uh, we're, we're going to let it be. <laughs> and so the longest 111 yards of my life, plus it was uphill both ways <laughs> <laughs> um so we get up there and sure enough it i could still remember it was in the lower left section of this circle but rob looks at me he looks at the arrow he looks at me he's like dude that's in and from there we kind of just rode the high right i took a picture with rob i took a picture with swope swope got some pictures of me down filling out my tag um you know, we go to the bar and people are talking about, you know, oh, heard you hit hit the shot, um, you know, blah, 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 on and on and on. Fast forward to my fiance and I are up in Putin Bay, which for those of you that don't know, um, I want it's got some sort of name. It's like Ohio's Nashville. Or yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's called Ohio, it's like Ohio's Nashville. It's up in Lake Erie, it's an island, it's just a big party island. But we were watching, um, we went up for a big country concert on their airstrip. Um, and so phones on silent, we're watching, we're heading back. We're, we're taking the ferry back to uh, my family's house. That's up there. It's a fishing shack. It's not a, this crazy big mansion, but it's awesome. It's what we need. And as soon as we set foot on the ferry, I take my phone off airplane mode and I'm getting blown up. Right. Cause I put it back in my pocket, not thinking anything. I pull my phone out. I'm like, what is going on? And I look, and it's just notification, notification, notification. And as soon as I go to open it, my brother calls. So I pick, pick him up and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, dude, what are you doing? This is like the fifth time he's called me. He's like, what are you doing? And I said, we just got done with, our, with the concert. We're headed back. We're going to grab some food. He's like, you won the truck. And it, I had to do a double take. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, the total archery challenge truck, you mm. won it hang up and get online because what they do is they uh, record it live and then they post it as like an actual post. And so I get online, I'm looking, uh, sure enough, um, the owner, Sean, backed his father-in-law, wrote all the names down on a paper, put it on a target, backed his father-in-law up to a hundred yards, let his father-in-law shoot, find it first, hit 
the second time, and he's ever named it Pierce, that's who won it. So I'm watching this all unfold, and I drop down, mind you, probably 200 people on this ferry boat, and I'm like, no way, this is crazy, on and on and on, right? So I hung up with Logan, I looked at that, I called Swope immediately, he already knew what had happened because everybody was in the know. I called my cousin Bryce to thank him for getting me into hunting. And I called my brother back and I tell this story the same way. Every time the people on the ferry had to think I was on hard drugs because I was freaking out. I was kissing <laughs> my now fiance. I was like, this is incredible. I can't believe this happened on and on and on. Um, so yeah. So I ended up winning the 2021 total archery challenge truck. Um, which had, you know, I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful. I will never, ever, ever take this thing for granted because this has opened up doors. I never, never could have imagined, you know, and to those of you that are listening, if a door presents itself, step the fuck through it because you have no idea what one one how much one thing can change the entire trajectory of your life exactly and so, yeah and so now you know because as a direct relation to that i'm now getting ready to shoot a film uh for nebraska velvet mule deer i now actually work with total archery challenge i actually uh you know shoot for a couple of different brands and things like that and I've met some absolutely remarkable people all because of the fact that my buddy Swope paid $15 for me to shoot it at a 111 yard caribou. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And, and that's, I love it, man, because <clears throat> like you were saying, you put in the work, right? I mean, you, you put in the work to train with your bow. Um, your buddy believed in you. Uh, there's, there's a reason why, you know, all those things happen. And so that that's awesome, man. Um, you know, I couldn't agree with you more as far as, you know, if there's a door that presents itself to go through it, because you don't know, you you don't know what is on the other side. And worse comes to worse, you're just not stuck where you were previously, right? I mean, right. that's the worst that that's the worst that can happen in most situations, right? And so there's a reason why you're looking for a door to begin with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll tell people this too. And actually, I don't think I've mentioned this on any of the other podcasts. I had, I actually had uh, someone, we'll, we'll leave it anonymous, but I, I actually had someone come and offer me the value of the truck in cash or yeah, basically in cash to buy it. You know, I went, I spoke with a financial planner who is, you know, a family member and he's like, sell the truck, take the money, put some into a, a Roth IRA, put some into the stocks, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. And there was just something there that I was like, I, I, I can do this. I, I can do something with this. And I ended up selling my other truck to pay for the taxes on this truck. And now it's, you know, once again, it's opened up doors I never could have imagined. Exactly. That's awesome. That's such a good story. Um, and I, I love that, that happened because I, I think the two years previous to that, Chris B had won both, didn't he? And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's funny in his 2019 total archery video, just a, it, it's in a B roll section, mm. but you can actually see my cousin and I standing up at the target range uh, with them as they're getting ready to shoot and stuff. So that was awesome. that was pretty cool to see. Yeah. A little premonition. That's cool. That's really cool, man. Well, and congratulations on that. You know, I, and the thing is like, I didn't even know about you then. Right. So like for me, I, like I knew Crispy had won it the first two years that I'd even known about total archery challenge just because it was I on think a YouTube lot of people channel. got into it because of him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. And, um, and then, you know, I, I didn't even really pay attention to whoever won uh, this last year, but I ran into you through first form and right. uh, first form outdoors mainly. Uh, you know, I got in with Jake and and Dale and then, uh, you know, I just kept hearing about this AJ kid and I'm like, like, well, my brother's name's AJ. 
they're not talking about him, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, it was awesome to, to come across your stuff and realize you're just a down to earth individual that just works hard, enjoys the outdoors, loves fitness. Um, you know, right now we're doing this, uh, you know, wake or wake water walk thing and, and yeah. you and Dale are doing the picking up trash. You're kind of heading on, you know, picking up trash, that little tweak to the wake water walk. Talk about that a little bit more. Um, why, why did you decide to pick up trash while you're out there? I mean, what? Yeah, so why? honestly it was, it's, you know, kind of a three part thing, right? So I've, I've done 75 hard currently I'm doing phase one and, uh, you know, part of that program is you have to do an outdoor workout. I'm like, great. You know, I see Jake, he's getting out wake water walk. He's hitting it hard. I'm like, I I'm doing my outdoor workout already. And then all of a sudden I see Dale's picking up trash. And I'm like, let me knock, let me knock out two birds, one stone. So I'm like, hit your outdoor workout, pick up trash. You know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that aren't big on social media, but social media can be, can be such a good thing, you know, and it can inspire others and it can get others to do stuff. And, you know, the picking up trash is no different than the shopping cart theory, right? Just the other day, uh, I think I think you might have commented on it. I was at a, a gas station filling up my car. There's a a almost tabletop type thing yeah. at the front of the pump, and there's a trash can at the back of the pump. And the tabletop thing at the front has like a 32 ounce McDonald's cup. And I'm like, the, this is exactly what we're talking about. What we're trying to fix. And you know, a lot of people have the I'm one person. What can I do mentality? And, you know, I don't have a huge following on social media or anything like that, but yeah, you're one person, but you might inspire five people, you know, you, th then all of a sudden, like, you know, us doing the wake water walk and, um, you know, picking up trash and stuff like that. I'm actually, I'm coming to my phone now, you know, we're doing all that stuff. And I know Jake has shared it to first form outdoors. Well, you know, we might only inspire five people, but one of those might be First Form Outdoors, which has 18,000 people, and they might inspire 100 to 200 people. And it just keeps going from there, and it's a domino effect. And it's just like, you're already there, you're already walking, you see the trash, you see the shopping cart, why not do what we all know is the right thing? And so that's why I just kind of merged the two together and Dale's merged the two. I think I've seen Jake pick that stuff up. Um, I know you've, you know, picked that stuff up as well. I know um, his Instagram is at Thwack Nick. He started oh, yeah, doing it. He's awesome. Yeah. And it's just like more and more people. And I see Jake and Dale reposting story after story after story of other people that are now outside bettering themselves. Oh, and by the way, they're making our environment cleaner as well. Mm -hmm. And recently, what I've really liked is Dale has started whatever he picks up, he picks apart why it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like I picked up Baja Blast today and, you know, mentioned about the sugar. Dale picked up the Fritos and was mentioned about the corn syrup. And so it's it just gets better and better, you know. And once again, you just have to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, you know, it, it's something that, you know, you don't think about. Um, everyone wants to talk about the the negatives of social media. And yeah, I agree 100%. You know, especially if you have any sort of following, there's going to be people that come in and are negative and uh, are, are against what you're doing, even if it is the best thing in the world. Uh, people are going to be against it, you know? Yeah. And, and it just happens. Right. Well, but, and, and I know you said you listened to the, uh, the other, mo the most recent podcast I did, I actually touched on that, you know, people catching hate, like Cam Haynes, mm -hmm. people literally hate this man because he works hard. And, you know, it, some people then will hate on me, call me a fanboy or whatever, but like, do you see how, how dumb that is? Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you might catch hate for, you know, d shooting your bow a long distance. So you're going to get mad that someone's practicing at a long distance, which will then make their 20, 30, 40 yard shots tighter. 
it makes no sense. And those mm-hmm. people, I don't have, I don't have time for it. Like, keep that bullshit away from me. I don't have time for the negativity. I'm not worried about it. If you want to hate, thanks for increasing the engagement on my social media. Yeah. It helps more people see it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's free advertising. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting to me too. And that's why I've, I've, you know, been on the kick lately about the abundance mentality, because people feel like you're taking away from them for some reason. And I don't understand why that's a thing, but Dude, it makes no sense. Right. But then last night, so I, I coach, um, and then I help coach a soccer team, my daughter's team, and then I coach my son's team. And then we have, um, so I'm LDS. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with what that is, but Mormon basically. Okay. Um, and so what, what, we do on Wednesdays is I'm, I'm in charge of one of the youth groups. That's my son's age. So the seven and eight year olds. Um, and on Wednesday, every other Wednesday, we have an activity. Usually my activities involve something outside. And so yesterday we we're just playing soccer. Well, before the activity, we have a spiritual thought and we start with a prayer, have a spiritual thought, and then we do our activity. And I just asked the kids, I was like, I was like, how does it make you guys feel when someone else is doing really good? And they were like, oh, it, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And then one of the kids raised his hand and he brought up, he was like, I feel jealous. And this is seven and eight year olds, right? Yeah. And I know, I know in junior high, high school, there's a lot of that kind of like what you were saying about the kids being jealous of your six pack or eight pack and being able to do all whatever you've got going on. They're jealous of that. And that's why they're bringing you down. Yeah. It's just like a bucket of crabs, you know? And because, so this kid- and- I'm sure you're getting to this because yeah. it's easier to bring someone down mm. than it is to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I need to better myself. Exactly. But anyways, so talk no, about yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Kid. And so the kid shared his experience, how he was playing goalie and wasn't doing so good, but one of their forwards was scoring and scoring and scoring. Well, that should be a good thing. Cause he's in a gate. He's helping you as the goalie. Right. But in this eight year old's mind, he's like, well, he's getting all the glory. And so if we don't change that and we were able to have a discussion with these seven and eight year olds about this and I see it in adults and I, and it, it, it makes me wonder like, well, was that never taught out of them? Because I do understand that that's the natural thing that especially men um, want to do. They feel if another man's succeeding or he has more muscles or he's stronger or whatever you, for some reason, think naturally you're like, Oh, I wish I had that. You know, but and my argument to that would be, is it actually naturally or is it just been ingrained in us for so many generations? Right. You know, has it, it has it just been the the thing that guys do right. and and why so and so has a Lamborghini? Oh, man, I'm going to be jealous of it. They make Lamborghinis every year, (laughs) work your ass off and go earn one. You know what I mean? Like it just, I feel like the jealousy, once again, you know, we can, we can talk shit on men because we are guys and, you know, we can (laughs) handle that aspect, especially in men. I feel like that's not necessarily natural, but I feel like our dads unintentionally did that. And we saw that and just naturally cabbaged onto it after that. Hmm. We'll see. And, and then, and, and I love having this discussion because, you know, uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm imagining being in Ohio or you Christian or you. Uh, just, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Okay, Christian, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, and call it good, call it bad, call it whatever you want. I, right. you, I, I joke that I'm the CEO, right? Christmas, Easter, other. There you go. <laughs> and, you know, not necessarily proud of it, not necessarily not proud of it, you know, right. whatever. But I tell everyone I do, I do my talking in the woods around right. a pond on a mm-hmm. back road as the sun's setting, as the yep. sun's rising. That's, that's where I have my spiritual time. Oh, yeah. um, and it, you know, it is what it is. My fiance, you'll like this. We joke that she is Catholic Mormon. Her family, her and her family are Catholic, but her last name is Mormon. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So that one, that one's always a funny one. Well, the reason but, why I ask is because the story of Cain and Abel, right? Mm-hmm. The, as, as old as time, 
one yep. of the sons was jealous because one son got more attention from God than the other, right? And however you want to turn that, if you want to believe that's a fable or whatever, people that are that don't necessarily believe in the Bible, that's fine. But it's I I want to say that is part of the quote unquote natural man that yeah. that jealousy that you have to overcome that because once you overcome that you you get on that other side that abundance mentality where you're like I want to learn from that guy what is he doing different instead of saying I want to bring him down because yeah. again going back to the eight year olds I I don't see a lot of eight year olds that that don't do things out of habit or out of nature right most eight year olds yeah. run around and do whatever the frick they want to do right and yep. so so that just kind of confirmed to me that it's one of those things that I agree there's a little bit of nature and nurture in just about anything, right? But we need to nurture that out of the nature of, of children because yeah. what you're getting now is the people that are jealous of the Lambos or jealous of this or that instead of saying, well, that's cool. Um, how do I get those bigger muscles or how do I get to kill a bigger elk or how do I get the, you know, the deer that's behind you? Right. How, how do I, how do I do that? Instead of being like, Oh, you know, he, he cheated or whatever, you know, why, yeah. why don't you just go to AJ and be like, Hey dude, um, what did you do to prepare to kill that animal? Right? And my, you know, and I feel like if you are going to be someone that gives that advice, right. Cause once again, recently with, you know, the, the, the skyrocket to where I'm at now, I've started getting those people and my first my first statement is I am not a professional, mm. but this is what I do, or this is what I, you know, the, the buck behind me, this mm. is what I did to get that deer, you know, or this is what I choose to shoot, you know, and bear probably wouldn't like this, but I, you know, I now shoot for bear, but anyone that comes to me saying, Hey, what should I shoot? I'm getting a new bow, blah, blah, blah. I send them to my archery shop and I tell them I'm partial to bear. I like this bow, this bow, this bow. Mm -hmm. However, you need to shoot everything. Mm -hmm. Your draw length might be different. You might like a different uh, string angle than what I like, you know, things like that. And it's just, you know, going from that standpoint and once again, fixing, not, not fixing, but what's the word? Um, getting all that jealousy out when people realize there is no shortage of success, there is no shortage of, you know, how hard you can work that, you know, these things are once you, once again, like you said, abundant there, mm -hmm. you know, you're never going to run out of success. No matter what happens in this world, there will always be successful people. And rather than hating on those individuals, you should be learning from them. You should be analyzing them. You should be figuring out, okay, well, this per why, why should I follow this person? What should I take away from this person? You know, uh, Kip Folks, uh, uh, co-founder of Under Armour, now is with Origin. He just had, I believe, a major surgery mm -hmm. um, in the leg or groin area. But one thing I took away from him he pushed the envelope on rehab and recovery because we got hunting season coming up, but he did it in a smart manner. And so I'm taking that away from him and learning from him in that regard. You know, I don't, it, it doesn't, hunting tactics makes no sense to hate on people. Even if I, like me personally, I have no desire to grow deer, but you know mm. what? I still watch Whitetail Edge. I still watch Lee and Tiffany. I still watch, um, you know, whitetail habitat solutions. And I like learning that stuff because of the fact that I know I'll be able to translate it into my style of hunting. They're planning a specific type of crop. Well, okay. If I'm walking around in the woods and I happen to see this thing out in the wild, I know deer like this and I can key in on that. There you go. And I, I feel like, I feel like people are worried that their mind has a shortage of capacity. Mm -hmm. Like, like they can only retain so much, but a mind is a muscle, just like anything else. You train it, the more you train it, the better it's going to be. Yep. And so that's, you know, that's kind of my whole 
you know, five, 10 minutes on the, the hating on others. It makes no sense. The shortage of success, you know, the abundance mentality and things like that. No, for sure. Yeah. And it, it just, it, it kind of, it, it's really interesting to me to see um, the kind of people showing up, you know, with the, with that negative mindset. And it just makes you wonder like, why it just, you know, and, and then, you know, we were talking about that with the kids last night and uh, the buddy of mine that, that helps run the group, he brought up that if you took every single human being that was on planet earth, you could fit them all in Rhode Island. And everyone would have a four square or four foot square of land. I don't That's know where the much... hell he found that stat, but that is really cool. Right. And <laughs> I, so, I didn't know that. Hey, dude, he's like, I, my wife's the Google queen, but this guy, he knows like the most random facts out there. It's ridiculous. We got to get but him on so, Jeopardy. And, yeah, and I, exactly. Yeah, for real. And I take him, I take him, you know, at his word. I didn't look it up. So I didn't verify it. So if someone's out there fact checking me, go ahead and message me, whatever. Well, I'm but definitely spewing I that thought, fact for I, sure. Yeah, I thought it was a cool fact, you know, and, and that's how much abundance we have. Yes. You know, there's, there, we're worried about food shortages and droughts and stuff, but we're always going to be able to make it through if we band together, you know, and that's one of the things too, is, you know, whether it be in the hunting industry, outdoors industry, the, the fitness industry. Um, you know, that's something that I love about first form is that any interaction I've ever had, even with Jake, but, but other people in the, in the industry with first form, none of them speak poorly. They don't even want to necessarily speak about other companies because yeah. they're like, great. That's, that's awesome. But in the back of your mind, you don't say this because it comes off as cocky, but you're like, I've got the best product. I don't need to argue about someone else. Right. Like, there's no point, right? Yeah, and, and, and if and, someone wants to argue with you, you, you know, say, hey, you know, you've got your opinion on it, and that's great. If you ever want to try something from First Form, let me know. Yep. And, you know, I, I, you know, Ziploc baggied a couple of different proteins and things like that, and people really seem to enjoy them. And, you know, you leave it at that. There's no point in into getting into a, a size contest, you know, mm. It, you just let people think what they want to think. And if they want to have, I'm all for open discussion, regardless of the topic, because I'm yeah. someone, you know, you could tell me I'm the ugliest dude on the planet. And you know what? That's fine by me. If you, if that's what you think, whatever, you're not going to upset or offend me. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that wants to have an open discussion about anything, let's do it. Um, I would just say, why are you checking me out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it, anyway, that's just, I and mean, we've, we've kind of gone off on that topic, but I, that's why I'm so stuck on it is because I feel like things would go so much better if more people would realize how much they currently have and what's available to have. If you just put in that effort, you know, you yeah. put in the work, you put in that vision board. I still need to get a physical vision board. I have like a, a piece of paper up here that I've got my stuff on that I'm looking at right now, but and in my mind, you know, I can visualize certain things. I was talking with someone the other day that um, he was like, he was like, can you imagine a year ago when you started the podcast, could you imagine where you are right now? And I said, this is going to sound really cocky, but yes. But yeah. And he, and he was like, okay, explain that a little bit. And he's the kind of guy that understands that mindset. But I was like, I pictured, I didn't know it would happen in a year, but I said in the next couple of years, this is where I want to be at. And, and. I'm here. And I'm like, wow, like it's still shocking. It's cool. It's humbling. But at the same time, I pictured that. And then I put in the work. I didn't just sit back and buy a microphone, buy a camera and just kind of like sit there and be like, okay, cool. Oh, go do your do, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It all, it'll do it itself. You know, Yeah, exactly. You didn't do that either with what everything that you've had come up, you had to step through those doors. Right. Yeah. And even when you won the truck, people were reaching out to you you still had to build those relationships and show that you were valuable to them. And that's what people don't see is they don't see the hundreds of calls. They don't see the emails. They don't see the text messages, the impromptu meetings, the mm -hmm. I'm with a client at this job. Hey, can you jump on here real quick? And I, you know, seal the deal with something on a 15 minute phone call. You know, people, people don't see those aspects. And to mm -hmm. some extent, there and this is how I feel about it. I still feel like 
all these brands willing to bet on me, I have so much to prove still. I mm-hmm. haven't done anything yet, you know? And this, this hunting season, it's really going to be the let's go get it done season. You know, I, and I feel like I'm going to feel this way next year too. Like I, I need to do more to solidify my place. I need to do more to show that I'm worth it. I, you know, there's always that, that hunger and stuff like that. And I really like the, you know, Andy was on real AF. He was just talking about it the other day, the, uh, 24 hour celebration rule, right? Mm -hmm. You're able to do something awesome. Yeah. Celebrate for 24 hours and get right back to work. You know, the, the seek a deer behind me, we, I shot that our first evening, we celebrated, we had a beer, we took it cause it was night one. So we took it to a processor that just had it hanging in his fridge. And at 4 30 AM, the alarm rang and it was right back to work. Let's do this, you know? And it's just, you can't, you can't settle and you can't get complacent. There's always mm-hmm. more that you can do as a person, as an individual. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and then on top of that mentioning, you know, there's always more you can do. People can get really overwhelmed with that. And that's why, and, and for a while I was, I was putting that up. Like when I was doing, when I do 75 hard or the phases right now, I've got to wait for phase three. And, um, and, but every single day I put up one day at a time. Right. And I had, again, people kind of mess like, really, you're going to say that again. I'm like, that's exactly how I handle it. Yeah. You know, one day at a time, one step at a time, one task at a time. And eventually you get to the point where you're there. And then it's, it's really funny. It's a great analogy is, is the, everyone's seen those little, um, the little picture of the guy climbing up the mountain. They've put different things on it. Like, you know, high school, you get to that fall summit college, you get to the fall yep. summit, then, you know, whatever you want to fill in there, but it's the same way you're climbing a real mountain. You know, I, I've stopped getting excited when I see a summit. Cause I know there's another one right behind it. So yeah. I just put my head down and you just take one step at a time. You get to the top, you enjoy the view and then you look over and you've got more to do. Right. But it's just that one, you put your head down and you do one step one day at a time and you're going to accomplish your goals. Yeah, no. And you know, to your point of people getting, you know, overwhelmed with it, could you imagine on days, you know, 10 through 14 of 75 hard, if you kept looking at the number 75, you would, you, there's no way you would make it. You look at day 13. All right. I completed day 13. Tomorrow is day 14. And you don't think anything else other than 13 to 14. That's one day, 14 to 15. That's one day, so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden you look back and you're like, I'm halfway done, but you can't, once again, even getting halfway done, you can't let that your eyes creep to that 75. You got to just stick with one day at a time. That's why, you know, I feel like you and I are similar in that sense. I'm sure you've seen my whole thing is keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be miles and miles at a time. You know, if you're somebody that's rehabbing an, an injury, obviously do stuff smart, but your keep moving forward might just be getting up from your recliner to go grab milk out of the fridge. But you know what? You walked those 30 steps to be able to do that. And tomorrow you get up and you go to the door as the wife's or the husband's on the way out and you give them a kiss. That's 40 steps to get there. And you just slowly, slowly work to it. And then all of a sudden you're back to how you were or even better than how you were. And it's just that whole you got to keep the train moving. You got to keep moving forward. Yep, exactly. Yeah, just just one step at a time. Keep moving forward. I love it. Um, all right, man. Well, I promised you an hour. We've been here for about an hour. Do you have anything that you want to <laughs> do you want to share with the listeners before you hop off here and go grab some of that origin camo that uh, you know, this is going to come out <laughs> weeks from now. So you guys already missed it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And me and AJ are going to go buy it all tonight. We're so. going we're gonna to go grab some on the first drop. They should have signed up for the email. No, man. Uh, yep. Um, honestly, you know what? I don't think I've done this yet. A lot of people ask closing thoughts. My closing thought, because I feel like you and I are similar individuals. I feel like you, I feel like you have similar listeners too. 
if there's ever a time that you don't know what to do, if there's ever a time you feel like you're stuck, my Instagram is at the underscore coffee Viking. Send me a message. You know, I, I will 100% help in any way that I can. Once again, I'm a professional in nothing. But you know what? I want to see you win just as bad as I want to see myself win. And so that is an open invite to anybody listening to this. Anybody listening to this podcast, if you're in a dark place, if you're not sure where to go, if you aren't you know, happy with what you're doing, or if you just want you know, to tell me about something you just accomplished, reach out to me. I would love to chat. I would love to help in any way that I can. Awesome. I appreciate that, man. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely important to have people out there. Again, social media is a good thing if you use it for what it is. It's a tool to mm-hmm. get yourself out there. I mean, I, I would have never met you. I would have never met Jake. I would have never met Dale. I would have never met most of the people that I have connections with now without social media. And so it's just one of those things yeah. that, and you know, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and now I'm on the podcast with you. Now we're friends and now we've got an elk trip to plan. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. More to come on that. We're not going to release that yet. We got to get no, permission no. from the head, head honcho that's heading this thing up, but still, uh, still in the works. Yes, but we're definitely, and it won't be the, it won't be the last, maybe the first, but yeah, uh, there's definitely going to be more of that coming. Um, all right, man. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time uh, hopping on here. And uh, actually, you know, since are you in front of a computer right now? Yeah. Okay. Dang it. I was going to say, if, if if you were just on your phone, I'm just going to keep you until right after six so I can go buy it all. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. I can use my phone as a computer. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks so much for, for hopping on here, AJ. And, uh, and thanks to you guys for listening. Again, you can reach him. I'll leave the links down below. Um, go check out his, his stuff and, and go give him a follow. And, uh, again, thanks so much for your time, man. And of course, as I always say, guys, get out, live your life. Thanks, man.